Have you ever used your probes as chopsticks, trying to get a reading in tight spaces? Or had to uniquely hold your meter to get your reading? Well, cue the music. A probe fixture would help in these situations. The probe fixture has two main requirements. First, it must be adjustable. Second, it must be usable with one hand. Plastic would have been an ideal choice for a material. I wanted to delve into casting. The material I will be using is tint because of its low melting temperature. Using an SLA printer, the casting template is 3D printed from the CAD model, which has some post processing. The cope and drag need to be manufactured. The box dimensions are limited by the amount of green sand ordered. The internal dimensions are 5 inch by 6 inch with a height of 6 inches. The edges of the mating surfaces need to be straight and flush and as square as possible. The material is then glued and screwed to ensure the box maintains its shape. To keep the box centered on itself, alignment tabs are glued and screwed to the sides using leftover material. Alignment is checked and the cope and drag are complete. The 3D printed model is placed in the drag, talcum powder is added and fine green sand is sifted onto the template. This allows for defined features in the casting. More sand is added and hammered in place. The excess is scraped off and the process repeats for the cope. The screw template is added to allow for the material to flow into the cavities and the green sand packing process is repeated. The model was designed with draft angles on the gripping components of the fixture. But after many failed attempts, the core of the gripping template would not stay. Post-processing will have to be completed. Vent holes are added to the coat. To allow for the material to flow, the gates for the patterns are cut out. The box is assembled and it's casting time. Tin ingots are heated using map gas. The dross is scraped from the liquid and the molten tin is poured. After a few minutes, the casting is dug out and removed from the mold. The gates are sawn off. Holes of the gripping components are created and filed to clean up the edges. The links are sanded. The mounting holes are drilled and tapped, and the finished components are assembled. I had some brass thumb screws on order, but they never arrived, so standard cap screws are used for now. The holder is wonderful. It allows for one-handed use for testing sensors and checking circuits with probe points that are around 10 inches of each other. The exposed metal was a little concerning, so the probe holder was dipped in rubber to prevent accidental shorts and improved grip. My name is Robert Klein, and this is the Probe Holder. Thank you.